Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC 17 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. We're just jumping back into things, still using the brand new team we featured for the last two episodes. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it, and it's been a really fun team to use. So yeah, we're just going to look for our first opponent of the day. Uh, it's, it's been a, it's definitely a really tricky team to use. I've been playing with it a bunch off screen, and... Uh, I think it's like a team where it's like it either does really well in best of one or it kind of just falls flat on his face if you go up against best of one gimmicks that you don't expect. So it's always a little bit scary, but you know, figured since we're not too high up on the ladder yet, might as well just try something like this. That might be a little bit less consistent, but a little bit more fun. And I really just wanted to try out now, Ego. I think it's a super solid Pokemon, although I'm not sure if this team supports it necessarily really well. So opponent here is running a team of Arcanine Muck. The Whimsicott, Tapu Lele, Garchomp, and the Pheromosa. So, a bunch of questions. I definitely think there might be a Scarf user on that team between Lele and Garchomp. I guess maybe Lele. Um, and with two Pokemon that typically carry Sash in the Whimsicott and the Pheromosa, I'm going to guess Whimsicott has Sash and Pheromosa has a Z move, but kind of tough to call. I think uh, my typical favorite lead of Coco Chomp here is actually pretty solid, especially because if it is Scarf Lele, it'll reveal its item immediately. If not, then I, like, electric type attacks do a lot to my opponent's team, as does Dazzling Gleam, honestly. Um, and I do have uh, a lot of options right from the beginning. So I like Coco Garchomp. Now he goes still pretty solid here with its ability to nuke the Garchomp, the Lele, and the Arcanine. And in the back, let's see... Gyarados is kind of tempting. Like, I really like bringing Gyarados against Garchomp, Arcanine, Muck Comps because they can't do too much damage to you unless they have Wild Charge on Arcanine, and you can intimidate them and potentially Dragon Dance as well. So, I think I'm going to go with that. Yeah. And, you know, obviously having a way to avoid Earthquakes and Ground-type attacks in general is really good. One of the best ways, or one of the best things in this format is, a, you know, being able to waste your opponent's Z-moves. And typically that's done by either switching in something that's immune to it, or not very effective against. So, for example, switching in a Gyarados on a Tectonic Rage would be so good. Not only do you get the Intimidate, you also waste the Z-move. Back when I was using the Tapu Lele, you know, getting Muck switched in was never fun. But we do see the Feramosa Lele lead here, so let's see if that is Scar Scarf Lele, like I think it is. It is. Okay, so I did call it correctly. So, Scarf Lele and Pheromosa here. Um, and he doesn't know I'm Scarf Chomp, and Scarf Chomp is faster than Scarf Lele. Hmm. Oh, this is such an aggro like lead from both of us. It's so scary. Fire Fang, unless Feromosa is sashed, I don't think it's going to be sashed, but it still could be, I guess. Because I really want to just Thunderbolt Lele and Fire Fang Feromosa. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Okay, I hit the Fire Fang. He doesn't know I'm Scarfed. Now he knows I'm Scarfed. And it's not uh, Sash Feromosa. Perfect. So I made the deduction based off the team comp. He's just going to Moonblast, probably Chomp. Maybe Coco. Ah, <laughs> nice. <sighs> but he gets a special attack drop. That's a little bit unfortunate. <sighs> but I paralyze him, so I guess that makes up for that. Uh, without that special attack drop, I think I might be able to KO him. Even if not, like, you'd definitely be in Fire Fang KO range. But that was still the turn one I was hoping for. The reason why my opponent got, went for the Moonblast onto the Coco slot instead of the Garchomp slot was obviously predicting a Protect from Garchomp, so I'll take that turn any day, especially with Muck in the back, because now I can switch back in and Earthquake freely. And we know that the Lele is Scarfed, but it's paralyzed now, so I'm going to outspeed that slot. So I'll Thunderbolt that slot. He could switch into Garchomp, but that's not too much of a concern. I'm going to switch into Gyarados here to get the Intimidate off against the Muck. So, fortunate paralysis there kind of makes up for the RNG uh, from my opponent with the accuracy drop. But, uh, not the accuracy drop. Wow, I've been so uh, used to facing Tapu Finis that I just say that on instinct. I also want to switch in Gyarados in case Muck has Shadow Sneak. He does switch out Lele, so we could be seeing Chomp. Ooh, it's Arcanine. Ooh, that's really good for me. Because what this means is Garchomp just Earthquake wins the game. 
So my opponent having just as aggro of a team as I have, and it's pretty nutty here, as I am just going to get the Thunderbolt off. And even with the special attack drop, that's still does so much damage, proccing Arcanine Citrus Berry. Getting rid of that berry, also good, because now it's in Earthquake KO range. He's going to go for a Poison Jab onto Coco, which is even better for me, because now I just bring in Garchomp and Earthquake and kind of win the game. So, yeah. I think uh, it's pretty clear cut here. I don't think I even need to Dragon Dance or anything with Gyarados. I can just go safely for the Earthquake. If you're my opponent, maybe you switch out into Tapu Lele. Yeah, I'll just Earthquake and Water Z move here. Because basically Earthquake does, it knocks out Arcanine. He doesn't have Intimidate and Lele is in Earthquake KO range as well. And Muck here doesn't do too much either. It can knock off my Scarf, which is the one thing I'm a little bit afraid of, but he's paralyzing the back. He doesn't switch up with either, so that's going to be game pretty much. So, there's Earthquake coming out. That's going to be a knockout onto Arcanine. Muck nearly faints too. Um, Water Z move. Actually, because it has the berry, uh, I needed the Water Z move to knock it out, but with the paralysis, like it didn't really matter whether he knocked me off or not. So, got a little bit lucky turn one, but honestly, I don't think it mattered too much. Like, he definitely wasn't expecting Choice Scarf on Garchomp. That's part of the reason why I'm using Scarf Chomp right now. It's like such a... I mean, it's not a gimmick, but it, it's really like... It, it can win you a game really quickly in best of one, but in best of three, the dynamic changes. But, I mean, we like I said, I wanted to try it out. We're on lower ladder right now, and I think it's a pretty intriguing set. I think Z-Move is still definitely the best, but with this team composition, because you're meant to hit as hard and aggro as possible... Wow, that doesn't even knock Muck out. Oh my gosh. I underestimated Muck's bulk there, uh, although it faints from the rough skin anyway, so there's nothing my opponent could have done, even if Lele weren't paralyzed, like, it's a two on, or it's a three on one, and Lele just can't knock everything out at once, even a Spex Dazzling Gleam doesn't knock out Gyarados, and it's a pretty simple double target here, so, uh, yeah, in, in this battle is really important predicting the items of my opponent's Pokemon, you know, calling the Scarf on Lele, calling the Sash on Pheromosa, etc., so, Psychic Terrain comes back up, but now we can just, oh wait, whoops, I'm locked. Because it, it was pretty risky, honestly. If, but, like, I figured there was not going to be a Sash on Pheromos. If that Pheromos had Sash, I actually probably would have lost. So it was like, I don't know. There wasn't too much. It was just, like, aggro offense here. That's why using these teams are really scary. Because it's like, if you make the wrong call or prediction, like, it can go really downhill. But fortunately, he didn't have the Focus Sash on Pheromos. I caught him off guard with that Scarf Chomp. And that was basically able to win me the game because my opponent was caught off guard by Garchomp not protecting there. And turn one literally won me the game, basically, there, especially given that my opponent had Arcanine, Muck, and the back. Like, that's just free fodder for Garchomp. So, kind of surprised my opponent didn't aim for the Moonblast onto the Garchomp slot, knowing, okay, uh, you, even if you protect, like, I suppose, though, if I do protect there, I don't know, like, your Pheromosa is probably going for a high jump kick or a fighting Z move into Coco, if I had to guess. Uh, although, Pheromosa also could have had Ice Beam, so if you weren't expecting the Scarf on Garchomp, that would make some sense. But, yeah, pretty interesting game there for sure. Just gonna look for our next one. Uh, I, other than that, yeah, I think... Like, once again, Scarf Chomp is like one of those things that I actually hate playing against because it's like, ah, oh, like, oh, I really didn't see that coming. Because most jumps you see, you typically assume Z move. Although it's kind of interesting, like, Sekiom won the London International with an Assault Vest Scarf Chomp, which I also hated playing against when I was using my Pelipper Rain team because those are really deadly. But we're going to find a 1758 rated opponent from Japan for our next opponent of the day. And with Triple Tapu here, wow, that's really interesting. Not sure if I mentioned in the first game, but as always, if you guys enjoy Road to Rank, please show us support by leaving a like in the video. We'll really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Whimsicott. Another Whimsicott. Wow. I, what is this Whimsicott meta, even though we didn't see it last game? Coco, Feeny, Arcanine, Metagross, and Bulu. Okay. This seems like a pretty good time for Nao Ego. Like, Nao Ego, obviously, Triple Tapu, Whimsicott, and Arcanine. Pretty good. But it has to avoid Metagross, and that's kind of a big threat. Hmm. I kind of like, once again, Coco Garchomp. Like, this is really my favorite lead because it gives you a lot of flex options, basically. And you have the ability to switch out immediately. So I think I'm going to go with those two. In the back, kind of debating between Arcanine and Gyarados. Gyarados is obviously weaker to Coco. It's not like Arcanine really deals with Coco too well either, though. Although I do have Wild Charge. 
Hmm. This one's kind of tough, actually, because I do see myself in a position maybe where I'd want to protect, but let's actually go with Arcanine, and I kind of like the heavy offense from that more. And it threatens Metagross a little bit more directly. I'm going to go now, you go for the fourth. So the tricky thing with going with this composition is that I can't just Earthquake freely, so I do have to be aware of that. If I do want to Earthquake, I'm going to have to Protect, but without having Protect on Coco, it basically means I can't Earthquake turn one unless I want to knock myself out, and most of the times you don't want to do that. But we'll see. It's obviously very dependent on what my opponent leads with as well. Excuse me. So we are going to see Whimsicott Coco. Okay. Hmm. So the question is, do I want to catch him off guard? Ah, this is where if I could switch into Gyarados, I actually would, because I would just Earthquake. Yeah, his Coco seems to be faster as well. I don't like this very much. I think Whimsicott will probably Tailwind here. And I should have maybe brought Snorlax. I can't deal with Tailwind very well. Unless he, like, Moonblasts me. I could Earthquake. But then I would just literally knock out something I have in the back. So I think I'm just going to Dazzling Gleam here. And... I'm focusing Coco down here. He might protect, though. No. Or maybe a double protect? If not, that would be pretty swell. Oh, okay. So, no Tailwind up at least turn one. Let's see what Coco goes for. Almost knock him out there. He's just gonna Gleam. Okay. I'll take that turn. He's Life Orb, too. So, yeah. It would have been nice. Like, if I had Gyarados, I definitely would have probably just... Uh, switched out into Gyarados and Earthquake, but the other concern is your opponent, my opponent could just protect Whimsic or Coco and Tailwind turn one. But at least Tailwind's denied and Scarf Chomp's still out here, so that's a pretty good turn one. Like, Scarf Chomp catches everyone off guard, which is why I lead with this lead pretty much. But once again, in best of three, it's like far less viable, especially once they know your items, because once you know it's Specs and Scarf, it's like, okay, you can play around that a lot easier. But uh, I'm kind of surprised to see Whimsic got protect there because. It's unlikely it's going to get knocked out unless it gets doubled up onto. Unless he doesn't have Sash, which would make some sense. Uh, we do see Feeny come in here too, which is solid. Mm. Okay. We'll probably Tailwind now. I don't think even Dazzling Gleam plus Poison Jab knocks out Feeny. So I could double up on a Whimsicott. The issue with doubling up onto Whimsicott is it actually helps my opponent out a little bit if Tailwind gets up. Because then you get a free switch and into something. So, I think I might Dazzling Gleam and just Poison Jab Feeny here. Whoa, I did not see that coming. What the heck? And that's faster, too. That outspeeds Scarf Chomp? Huh. I guess I never considered Whimsicott when I was building Scarf Chomp. Because um, I think I'm admin max speed. Yikes. <laughs> that's not good. I'm just going to pick up a... Or get double knocked out here, yeah. Ooh, nature's power whimsicott. Hmm. I guess that makes sense because there's like triple tapu. So, it's not the end of the world because I do get the double switch in, but... Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna intentionally not knock out Feeny here. Because I think whimsicott might tailwind, but whimsicott doesn't do anything offensively against me. So my goal is to... Does that work even? It could. It comes down to what the last one is. Okay. Mm. So I'd like to Sludge Bomb Feeny right now. I think Feeny here definitely wants to protect. But that's fine, because if I knock out Whimsicott and it gets Tailwind up, then my opponent gets a free switch and into something. The only question is, does Feeny... Like, Feeny might want to switch out, so I think I'm going to double up onto the Feeny slot with a Sludge Bomb and a Flare Blitz. If for some reason he doesn't protect, then I just knock that out, and Arcanine's Flare Blitz gets redirected to Whimsicott. Uh, I'm expecting Feeny to protect here, but Whimsicott's not an offensive option, and so he does protect, but that's fine. There's pretty much nothing else I can go for. I can't really Encore either. Or, sorry. Oh, what the heck? No way. Tectonic Rage. <laughs> oh no, Twinkle Tackle. 
Okay. Huh. What is nature's power? Does this knock me out? It shouldn't, right? That shouldn't do too much. They did nothing. Wow, okay. Wait, why not just Tailwind? Was he trying to break a sash there? Oh, he probably has... Okay, I think the last one's going to be Metagross. But that's fine. I literally can make this exact same play here again, and I lose nothing. That's why I'm not targeting Whimsicott, because it's not an offensive option. Other than... I mean, it has nature power, but, like, it can't... Arcanine and Naoyugo resist Fairy really well. Naoyugo is really good special defensively, and Arcanine, even though this one isn't bulky, still takes these really well. He would draw Speeny. Let's see what comes in. Oh, I thought the last one was going to be Metagross. It's Arcanine. Ugh. Oh, that's a little bit frustrating. I, does he? I guess he doesn't have Tailwind. He must not. Please don't special attack drop. Okay. This doesn't knock out Arcanine, I'm pretty sure, but... Unless he's offensive. Is he offensive? No Barry. So I can just Extreme Speed Sludge Bomb next turn. Wow, what is this game? Yeah, I think Extreme Speed should pick up that knockout, even though I am intimidated on max attack. Um, is there any reason to, though? Why not just Power Gem Mark and I and Flare Blitz? He must not have Tailwind, otherwise you have to be going for it. Or not even Power Gem, just Sludge Bomb Flare Blitz. Unless he's Scarf Arcanine. Oh, okay, no, he just Extreme Speeds. Ooh, but... Does this knock me out? Oh, but then it's Arcanine versus Feeny. Because I pay from my form! I'm so bad I should have considered extreme... I mean, he was obviously offensive. I don't know why I didn't read into extreme speed. My play there is to protect Flare Blitz into Whimsicott. Well, <laughs> I've got Wild Charge. But that's not enough to deal with Whimsicott. Oh, the extreme speed was so obvious. Like, it was his only play. I don't know why... Like... I could have extreme speeded with my Arcanine as well, too. Although he's probably max speed as well, so it'd probably be a speed type, but at least. Yeah, that was. I just kind of threw that one away. That was my bad. He protects. Okay, that was. That was just. Ugh. Like, I, I was like, extreme speed should KO, but I don't know why. I was like, maybe it won't KO, and as a result, I didn't consider the extreme speed play, speed play from my opponent. Like, that was just a very obvious, here's a better play you could have done. Um, I suppose if I lose the speed tie, though, then I would still be screwed. No, what I should do is protect. I should have just protected. Yeah, because he needed the extra Moonblast damage, so I should have just protected now. Ego and attack with Arcanine. The only issue is if he protects with his Whimsicott. Um, and that has Encore, because then I would lose there, too. But, uh, yeah, I, that was a pretty bad oversight. It was funny, because I have Extreme Speed as well, and it was obviously an offensive arc. Now, I need a Wild Charge crit to win this, or a Muddy Water miss. Jeez, actually, even that, Daphini's so bulky. He does hit Muddy Water. This might not knock me out, though, even though it's single target, because that looks so bulky. But I am intimidated. Okay, yeah, it still knocks me out. <laughs> Can't underestimate the Muddy Water damage from Daphini. So, I am... Content about how I played that game up until that one turn where I basically threw it. Like, that was a, that was just poorly done on my end. Um, but, yeah, we it was a relatively short game here, or a really short episode, so I think I'll fit in time for a third game. So I'll try to bounce back from that last one. I'm trying to think if it was, like, an absolute throw, so let's say I protect. There's, like, a reason not to protect the now ego there. But not going for extreme speed was bad, too. Like, I should have just e-speeded Arcanine, forgetting about his e-speed, because Tapu Fini wins the game. And I totally, like, Arcanine does a ton of damage. I might have been banded Arcanine as well. So, I did, once again, I didn't know how fast the Arcanine was. I think I'm admin max speed, if I remember correctly. But uh, <laughs> that was kind of poorly played and could have been thought a little bit better. But, yeah, we're going to find Posse from Indiana with the rating of 1660. And sometimes it's really good just to evaluate your losses and see, like, was that RNG or could I just have played better? And that was definitely a game where I was like, oh, man, like, I just screwed up that one turn kind of bad. But, uh, yeah, Posse is going to have a team of Muk, Garchomp, Coco, Arakune, Tapu Fini, and uh, Ninetales. So, let's see. I mean, every time I see uh, Ninetales, I always love going Coco Garchomp. I don't really see much reason to deviate from that. 
In the back, I think now you go still really solid. And for the last one, it's between Arcanine and Gyarados. I'm not bringing Snorlax in these games, really, because there's no Trick Room. So, <sighs> Gyarados is a little bit... No, I think Arcanine's better here. Uh, Wild Charge and Ability to Extreme Speed. And Flare Blitz saying Muck. And I have the Fire Z move. Well, I'm really sad about that last one, though. That was just so poorly done on my end. I mean, I, I okay, I, I guess the other thing was I was completely caught off guard by Whimsicott using one, the Z move, and Nature Power. I just, like, can't believe it didn't have Tailwind. Uh, it's not something you see every day, but Z move, Twinkle, Tackle, uh, Whimsicott. That's pretty cool. Uh, it makes a lot of sense because when you have three Tapus on your team, I should have actually thought about Nature's Power. Like, I didn't even consider that that was something that I could use at all. But when you have triple Tapu, like, yeah, Nature's Power makes some sense. So we're gonna lock in, just trying to get into this first game, or this third game. But yeah, that's that's the difficulty with this team. Like, the couple of games I've played off screen too, it's like, every turn is just so offensively oriented. Um, and I, I kind of enjoy that, but I think after using like the Porygon 2 Ninetales team, like that's a team that you can like really methodically think through and switch out and like kind of think through every turn. But this team is like boom, 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 like hyper, hyper aggro offense. So let's see what my opponent brings here gonna be gonna be gonna be gonna be uh coco chomp for me obviously and we're gonna see feeny araquanid i think i'll take that i'll definitely take that uh, the only question is araquanid has a uh, wide guard because if you have it you definitely go for it but this kind of reminds me of i think yesterday's match hmm What do I want to do here? I really want to discharge, <laughs> um, but I think it's safer to just Thunderbolt. Question is, who do I Thunderbolt into? Araquanid threatens with a Z move. I feel like Araquanid's probably going to protect here, but Feeny can't knock out my Coco. Yeah, so I'll just play it safe. Poison Jab, Feeny, Thunderbolt, Araquanid. He could Moonblast Chomp, but I don't need Scarf Chomp too much here. Okay, is that Chomp switching in? That's frustrating. Okay, no worries. Yeah, so I could have discharged or thunderbolted into Feeny there. Poison Jab, wow, that's could probably specs Feeny, which is bad because I'm probably taking a Moonblast here. Or a Dazzling Gleam. Does that knock me out though? It does not. Huh. I guess Poison Jab just does more than I expected. Okay, I'll take that turn then. Cause this is a perfect opportunity. Oh, I didn't bring Gyarados. <laughs> Hmm, thinking emoji. That was a bad oversight. That was really bad. So he's gonna earthquake here. And I can't protect. I don't know he goes looking pretty threatening against this team though. I'm running out of time. This is bad. Uh, I want to switch Coco out here. Oh my gosh. That's not what I wanted to do. The, re the reason why I don't want to do that is because Earthquake's not going to knock out my Chomp now. And I kind of want it to. Maybe it does. I wonder if he's Scarf Chomp as well. Oh, if I had Gyarados, this would have been such a perfect position to be in. He doesn't protect Feeny though. Okay. Maybe he's Z-moving then. I'll take the sacrifice on my Arcanine. Wow. Well, that play works out very nicely for me. He ends up Dragon Clawing in Misty Terrain through Intimidate, and Garchomp takes that. I suppose he didn't want to Earthquake himself, but I don't understand why my opponent didn't protect Earthquake. Like, that just makes a lot more sense to me. But, uh, we take those, I guess. So Ninetales comes in. Uh, that's perfectly fine for me. I think I've pretty much... I feel very confident about my position right now because what I can do is just protect and poison jab. Ninetales might protect here. If it does, that's fine. Either way, I'll get a free switch in into Coco. Actually, or Naoigo. Actually, Naoigo's better. Yeah, I think Naoigo, Arcanine, and... Huh. 
I guess Earthquake would like the, the the thing I was really scared of last turn is if Feeny protects and Garchomp Earthquakes, then my Garchomp actually probably hangs on from the Intimidate and my Arcanine takes a ton of damage. I suppose the next turn I would just protect my Arcanine and sack my Chomp, but now I'm in a really solid position. Doesn't look like he's protecting with his Nine Tails as well, so that's a free jab into that slot. And that's gonna be an extreme speed KO range, so now now Eagle can just come back in. Yeah. So interesting decision to be so aggressive this entire game. Maybe my opponent hasn't pieced it, but it's Scarf Chomp yet, but like you had to have given the first turn. Ooh, Tectonic Rage though. So yeah, kind of surprised to not see that last turn. I was willing to sack my Arcanine because I knew now you go Coco could close out this game for me. But now it's pretty easy pickings here. I just bring in now you go just HP Ice into the Garchomp slot and uh, Extreme Speed into Arcanine or Nine Tails. Unless he crits me here, but he shouldn't. <laughs> but he shouldn't. What, what am I saying? Uh, even if he crits me here, that doesn't knock me out. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Look at me trying to like predict whether my opponent was going to crit me or not. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We all take some hail damage. Yada yada yada. And here's the cleanup crew. So this is one of the reasons why I did want to use Nao Eagle on this team. Because it really can... Like Garchomp's really popular right now, right? And especially the Z-move ones. You can just one-shot that with HP Ice. Tapu's are really common. You can Sludge Bomb them. Arcanine's really common. You can Power Gem them. Etc. So I shall just extreme speed here. This time going for the extreme speed after throwing that last game away, basically. And HPSing into Chomp. And yeah, that's why you really need to think through every turn. And like, I wouldn't call meh. That last game was still kind of a throw. Like, okay, he's gonna switch out Chomp, but that's fine. A good play though. But if Ninetales doesn't protect here, it doesn't matter. He doesn't protect. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my opponent really just not opting for protects at any point, which is kind of surprising. Um, I like that play about my opponent though, because now you bring in the Chomp, at least you thread in with the Protect from Garchomp. Uh, but with Hail still up, and Coco in the back, I suppose it's not 100% over yet. Because, <laughs> like, a, a clever play I could make, right, is switching out into... I also wonder if Arachnid's like non-Z move, because Garchomp already used it. Otherwise, he could be double Z move. Um, like, I'd love to switch out into Coco right now and go for a wild charge, but I think the best play is honestly to just wild charge Arachnid. And HP Ice. He'll probably protect Garchomp, but that's fine because I've got uh, Coco in the back anyway. Actually, unless Arachnid is wide guard, I should have protected now. Oh, never mind, okay. So, the other possible play my opponent could have made was predicting now he go to protect, so he predicted that, I guess. Uh, yeah, we didn't see any protects come out this game at all. Really would have come down to what a Araquanid did there, because if you do predict now he go to protect, then I suppose it's weird that the Araquanid didn't protect, but let's see what its item was here. Yeah, Wild Charge chunks that really well. It does over 50%, which is part of the reason why I did want Wild Charge. He does Liquidation, uh, so he did target the now Ego, so I... Kind of curious why Garchomp didn't protect there, but yeah, this actually could have been really bad if he had Wide Guard there on uh, Araquan. If he actually had Wide Guard, I would just lose the game that way. So that's why I regretted my play after I made it. I should have just protected my Mao Ego. Though he probably was going for an Earthquake there. But the thing is, if you do go for an Earthquake and you knock out my Arcanine, then Coco comes in for free, and then I just HP Ice Thunderbolt. The only fear is if he protects Garchomp and liquidations into Nao Ego. Um, wait, sorry. If he doesn't protect Garchomp and liquidations into Nao Eagle, which is actually what he did, yeah. So maybe I ended up making the right call there, but that could have played out very differently. So the thing for my opponent is, let's say you actually don't go for the knockout onto Arcanine and you don't protect, then the next turn I'm playing some protect mind games. Although I suppose you'd have to protect with Garchomp so I could just switch out into Coco and Wild Charge. Um, so many mind games. <laughs> But yeah, now I just wild charge that and gleam. It is frustrating you don't, like, Coco doesn't even get Moonblast. Otherwise, I would totally run that. But yeah, my opponent's going to forfeit. And we're going to take two wins. And today, we do pick up our uh, loss with uh, with this team. But not too bad there. I mean, I'm a little bit frustrated because that was just a complete oversight by my end. And I just didn't think through that term. But it's always good to reflect on your losses. And that was just a loss where I was like, oh, I didn't play very well. I completely screwed up that one turn. And I really should have reconsidered things. And I definitely had the win in my hands if I played it correctly. So... Yeah, sometimes you just make mistakes like that and don't play too well, but good to evaluate and learn from them. So we do fit in three full games for you guys in today's episode, which is really nice. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, leave a like if you did, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, peace.